like obviously it's it's very tough to take. Um, you know, I think for large parts of the maybe the first two thirds of the game, you know, we did everything we talked about. You know, we were physical, we got off the line, we held the ball well, um, and I think just to to give up that lead. Um, you know, a lot of the things that, that we feel we can control and, and things we talk about doing, um, we didn't do. You know, they, they they got around the corner, they carried, and, and we started to soak tackles, um, which is something that even before we left Dublin, we talked about it, that if we physically get beaten up by South Africa around the fringes, you know, we're going to be on the back foot. And if you go on the back foot against a team like this, you're going to be struggling. Uh, no, that'll take us probably about 48 hours, to be honest. There's, uh, there's certainly plenty of fatigue there. Obviously, Robbie Henshaw, he, he copped a knock in the knee. Um, it's a little bit inflamed, so that'll take you know, probably 20, at least 24 hours for the swelling to go down uh, before we can get a decent look at it, and um, you know, maybe 48 hours. So we'll just, we'll just see how that goes. A few other guys were getting cramp which is uh, you know, obviously a temporary thing, but uh, something we'll want, we'll want to try to avoid um, in next week's test. You know, we, are, um, we have some of the best conditioning staff around um, in Ireland and, and in the provinces, and you know, we really back our fitness. Um, we, we talked about as well that you know, there's, there's a fair few of the South African players that play their provincial rugby at sea level too, so you know, it, was a, it was the same factor for everyone. But look, we won't be looking for excuses like that. We'd really back our fitness, and I think when you look at it, it wasn't that we weren't in the right position. We just, whether it was mentally, just switched off a little bit and, and started to soak tackles. Um, yeah, look, they, uh, they delivered an onslaught that we didn't quite uh, match up to. Um, we missed tackles. Uh, you know, we, we felt a little bit unlucky a couple of times. We weren't uh, we weren't able to make tackles, and uh, again, um, you know, we would probably have a second look at that, and, and we could send a report through. But that's not going to change the result, and the result is is well and truly earned by the South African uh, by the South African ball carriers. They really did uh, take it to us, and we weren't quite up to the task. And you know, that's incredibly disappointing after being 26-10 ahead. With that, within that last quarter and uh, you know 19-3 up at half time, um, you know we probably just missed a kick just before and just after half time, which which could have kept our confidence levels up and maybe uh, delivered a little bit more of a of a blow to the South African team. But the way they came back, uh, you know they were they were relatively irrepressible. Um, I think there are some positives for us. I thought Ty Furlong was was uh, was great. Um, you know, Mike Ross certainly wasn't dropped. That's uh, that's a farcical comment, but uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was an opportunity for for Ty to demonstrate what he was capable of doing, and I, I think everybody probably saw he he, he did a super job for us. Um, you know, I thought Quinn Rue gave 50 minutes of of real ballast to the scrum, and uh, he got around the park and and he. he he made sure that we weren't losing those collisions. So, you know, some of those guys who, who came in, Stu Olding, his first three tackles were really uh, decisive and uh, allowed us to make sure that we could set our defensive line either side of him in that, in that tackle area. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's really satisfying in, in, uh, in the sense that we're trying to build the squad, but at the same time, we're incredibly disappointed with, uh, with the end result.